Well, the day that everyone has been waiting for is finally here. And I feel like I keep saying this every single time when a new GPU drops from either Nvidia or AMD, but guys, we're finally getting an answer. Will AMD's RX 7900XDX and 7900XD be able to either match or beat the RTX 4000 series while costing less money. Well, first off, the RTX 4090 is a monster card that AMD isn't even trying to compete with. So don't expect to see that here. That being said, the RTX 4080, well, let's just say that it's a good product at a terrible price and is definitely vulnerable to competition, especially since they haven't exactly been flying off store shelves at current prices. You can find them in stock everywhere. Heck, even scalpers are actually trying to return them, which is pretty hilarious. And speaking of which, AMD's new cards will be available tomorrow, and I'm saying in quotations because from everything that we've been hearing, there won't be a lot of them at all. But that's nothing new for AMD launches, is it? And while these RX 7900 series cards are both less expensive than what the RTX 4080 launched for, they aren't exactly cheap either. Also, with just the $100 separating the XDX from the XD, a lot of people have been wondering if there's any point in jumping down to a lower end card. I mean, their specs are pretty close to one another too, at least on paper. But the XTX does tend to consume a bit more power. And that's what our test shows. AMD says the 7900 XDX chucks back 350 watts, and that's exactly what it does, and that makes it quite a bit more power hungry than the RTX 4080. These numbers goes to show you that these cards are pushed hard in order to compete with Nvidia, and that maybe AMD's choice to use the older 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer manufacturing process has its own downsides. The RX 7900 XT, on the other hand, hovers right under the 315 watt mark in every single game. The only exception for both GPUs is Valorant, since even with the 7700 X, we're running into a CPU bottleneck. The same goes for ray tracing. The 7900 XTX is certainly power hungry when compared to the RTX 4080, and in some situations, it can need almost 100 watts more, which might be a bit concerning for some people. But what's more interesting to me is the fact that AMD's card need exactly what they say, whereas the RTX 4080's power fluctuates a lot from one test to another. You see, the nice thing about these cards is that they're way, way more compact than Nvidia's, and that means they'll be easier to fit in a lot of more builds. In fact, you know what would they fit in? Into Fractal's amazing new case, the Ridge, or just Ridge. Whoa, dude, that was so rich last night. You went to the ridge? Of course, I had a secret code. What is it? It was rich. That's rich, man. That's rich. Wait a second, is that a ridge? Yep. Didn't have to go anywhere last night. Dude, that's so rich. An evolution in slim towers designed to fit your space for gaming or entertainment, standing tall or laying flat with powerful fans to scare the heat, a Gen 4 riser cable is included so you can find your own balance. That's rich for you. The talk of the town. Bridget below. All right, so the compact size is certainly nice, and there are a few other things that are pretty great for future proofing or just general quality of life improvements over the RTX 4000 series. AMD is also making a big deal about their ports, and there's a good reason for that since they've moved to DisplayPort 2.1. Now, look, I'm pretty sure it'll be a few years until displays get anywhere close to the specs offered by that port, but at least you know there's a good amount of future proofing built in. They've also added a USB Type-C port with DisplayPort 2.1. And that thing's a pretty big deal too, since it offers up to 27 watts of power output, and it can also act as another data port for your build with pretty decent transfer speeds of at least one gigabyte per second. You guys have no idea how I'm excited about this port because on my ITX rig with the 2080 Ti that features a USB-C port, this is a great upgrade because you know, none of the 40 series cards or the 30 series cards have that, and my ITX case base I mean, it doesn't even have a lot of ports, so this this is great. Also, the dual 8-pin power layout means it'll probably play nice with more power supplies too, without the need of adapters that mess with cable routing or catch on fire. But you also have to take into account the RX 7900 XDX's additional power leads to more heat being dumped into the case too. But that doesn't necessarily mean these cards run hot, at least not on our open test setup, because these are some of the lowest temperatures we've seen. I do have to mention that this is average chip temperatures that are being measured across multiple parts of the GPU core. Meanwhile, the hotspot temperature shows the absolute maximum, and that's pretty low too when you consider the card set to throttle at 110 degrees. So now that we've set the stage here, let's have a serious talk about 
where you guys land on running professional applications on your GPUs. Like, do you really care about gaming performance or do you also want your expensive graphics card to do more, like accelerate video encoding or rendering an animated scene? Because that's the next section we're gonna be covering. And AMD's performance can be super strong, like in Resolve, at least at our specific H.265 rendering settings. Handbrake sees the 7900 series in a 1-2 position too, so it seems like their video transcoding abilities have come a long way. But with H.264 in Premiere, things take a pretty big dive where these new cards can't even come close to the RTX 3080 Ti. The interesting thing is that in Premiere, the 7900 XDXs ended up hitting 3 GHz pretty often, which makes sense since it's a pretty inconsistent load where it spikes and then settles down as the system moves to the next scene. 3ds Max and SOLIDWORKS meanwhile fall into the same category where they even come close to the RTX 4000 series, but it's still hard to beat NVIDIA in GPU compute. Now, Blender needs a bit of a longer explanation though, since it was a challenge to get some scenes to complete or at least finish without rendering errors. In tests like this one where the 7900 series actually finished, the cards suffered big time. Now, AMD's Pro Render add-on is supposed to take care of that, but overall, we found its support to be spotty, while CUDA ran without a hitch with every scene we tried. And that hit and miss support from Pro Render continued in Maya. AMD released an update for the 2023 version and it aired out every time we ran it on the converted Arnold renderer file. Meanwhile, Keyshot still doesn't support AMD's GPUs, so it's a big goose egg here. So basically, while AMD seems to be taking some pretty good steps to support their GPU compute side, they still have a long way to go since NVIDIA's CUDA has such broad developer and plugin support. If an app has general purpose GPU, then most likely it will have CUDA support, whereas AMD's compatible is sort of a hit and miss. But look, these are gaming GPUs first and foremost. So let's get on to those gaming results starting at 1440p. And these cards land exactly where a lot of people hoped they would in regular rasterized games. They typically bookend the RTX 4080, with the XTX being a bit faster, while the XT a bit slower. Of course, there are certain games that benefit each company, but even in those, the 7900 series is able to either tie or even have both cards pull ahead of the 4080, especially in 1% lows. And those 1% lows really do need a special callout because this is an area where AMD's large memory size and infinity cache might be making a difference. I mean, the RTX 4080 has great performance if you only look at it at one dimensionally through averages. Now, if you were able to pick up one of those RX 6950 XTs that went for under $800, well, you have nothing to worry about since it still competes well with the 7900 XT price to performance wise and even against the XDX. We did run into one issue though, and this is something that plagued the RTX 4080 too. CSGO just doesn't seem to like these new cards at all. It might have to do something with driver overhead, but yeah, there's just a minor loss for AMD here since these are still massive frame rate numbers. So with the way how things stand right now, this is really bad news for Nvidia because the RTX 4080 is being destroyed in performance per dollar here. Meanwhile, they do tend to lead in performance per watt if that's something you actually care about when buying a thousand dollar GPU. So what's next for them? Well they're going into hard upsell mode with their other technologies like DLSS, Reflex, and whatnot in order to justify their premium. The question is whether or not if gamers actually care. 4K essentially shows the same thing as 1440p did, but both AMD cards tend to do a bit better compared to the RTX 4080 at this high resolution. On the flip side, nothing. I mean, nothing can come close to the RTX 4090, guys, unless there's a game that doesn't play nice with NVIDIA drivers. Otherwise, it's a dominant GPU. But is it worth $600 more than the 7900 XDX? No, but flagship cards are never what you consider a great value anyways. But generationally, the raw jump in performance between the 6950 XT and the 7900 XDX is pretty impressive. Most of the time, it's in the neighborhood of 30% to 50%, and you have to remember, our 6950 XT is a pre-overclocked Sapphire model. On the other hand, you have to admit what AMD's putting on the table here is really, really appealing for gamers. With the XDX, you get performance that generally beats the RTX 4080, especially in those key 1% lows, while the XT also gets pretty good performance. If anything, that 7900 XT being just $100 cheaper than the XDX and getting frame rates that match or beat an overclocked RTX 3090 Ti 
sets it up perfectly to fight against whatever the RTX 4080 12GB will be relaunched as. And the last step on this journey is, of course, ray tracing. And look, we all know NVIDIA is supposed to dominate here, but AMD hasn't been standing still on RT because the RDNA 3 architecture has received some massive updates in that area. And it really shows too, with both of these new 7900 series cards getting much, much better results than even the 6950 XT. Actually, if you look closely, AMD is actually caught up to the RTX 3080 Ti, and in some rare situations, the RX 7900 XTX is able to at least match a pre-overclocked RTX 3090 Ti. And I know the RTX 4080 and RTX 4090 are basically untouchable here, but I think these numbers are a heck of a lot more competitive than anyone had expected, especially at 4K. And that's important for the ray tracing market as a whole because this puts the ability to enable RT into the hands of more gamers. And you know what? Everyone, including NVIDIA, should be happy about that. Well, I think Mike predicted this pretty well in his preview. People who absolutely want the highest level of ray tracing possible or the best possible compatibility with professional GPU accelerated rendering will stick to NVIDIA. On the other hand, if you care about maximizing your gaming bang for the buck, and if you want to maybe dabble a bit into ray tracing, then the RX 7900 XTX is the way to go. I mean, it gets RTX 3080 Ti levels of RT performance, and that's before even enabling FSR, which can double frame rates, much like DLSS. Now, sure, it might consume more power than the RTX 4080, but it gets better overall FPS while costing a whole lot less. The RX 7900 XT, well, that's a bit tougher because when you're talking about these kinds of prices, I'd spend that extra hundred bucks and get overall better performance, especially if you think a 4K display might be in your future upgrade plans. But the XT does give AMD a huge leg up when it comes to putting pressure to whatever NVIDIA is launching next. As a matter of fact, I think this card will end up putting more downwards pressure on the entire GeForce lineup than the XDX ever could. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about AMD's shiny new flagship RX 7900 XTX and XT. Let us know what you guys think about it. And if you're willing to upgrade or looking to upgrade your GPU, is it Team NVIDIA or AMD? Chat in the comments down below. I'm Ebor with Hardware Connects. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. By the way, please spend responsibly. Yeah, it's very much needed for this video.